Hello, 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 hello. Today we will continue with the concept of the fraction. I told you that the previous problem was the precursor to the problem that I will propose today. Today it's about a pinhole camera. A pinhole camera is nothing more than a small hole through which you let the light through and then a screen where you look at the image formed by the pinhole. Called pinhole camera. You can look a pinhole camera on the web. What I want to discuss with you today is what would be the optimum diameter of a pinhole camera to get the best angular resolution that you can get. What is that value of the diameter of the pinhole? So let's go over in a little bit more detail. So here was the single slit with a width capital D and we used 0.1 millimeters for our previous problem and at a distance L which in our case was 3 meters we look at a screen and when we look at the screen we will see this kind of a diffraction pattern. And the distance on that screen between the first time that we have complete destructive interference on this side and that we have it on the other side, that distance, we calculated, was 39 millimeters. If we do a similar experiment with a pinhole camera, or I should now use the word simply pinhole, so instead of a narrow slit, we have a small opening. Then the whole concept of diffraction is extremely similar, but to calculate exactly where the destructive interference points are on the screen is slightly more difficult. So I don't want you to go through that, but I want you to know that the distance between the two closest destructed interference points is about 20% larger than in the case of single slit. So let's look at that. You see that here. I'm not sure you can read this, but it says consider a round hole of diameter D. Same idea as long slit, only the geometry is different. The angle between the first minimum D sine theta is lambda. That would be the angle from the center maximum. And since we wanted to know the distance between the zero, the complete destruction on both sides, it would be double, the angle would be double that. But that's a detail now, that's obvious. So for a long slit, d sine theta is lambda. For a circular hole, it is 22% larger, so it is roughly 1.2 times the angle for a single slit. So that means if you look at the image on the wall, then the separation between the two deathstroke interference points closest to the center maximum are then 1.2 times 
higher than if it were a single slit. In our case, we had capital D for the single slit 0.1 millimeters, and we had capital L, the distance 3 meters, and we calculated that the distance between those two destructive interference points was 39 millimeters. So if we did the same experiment with a pinhole, with the same diameter, 0.1 millimeters, it would be 20% roughly larger than 39 millimeters. Okay. So let's now discuss the concept behind a pinhole camera. Here is a pinhole which has a diameter of one millimeter. And here is a screen which is three meters away. Any star very far away <laughs> in the universe will obviously show up on the screen with the size of one millimeter. That's quite trivial, right? Because the light that comes from the star parallel to each other. So a one millimeter hole will show on the screen a small dot, a small disc if you want to, with a diameter of one millimeter. If now you want to look at two stars in the sky, they have to be separated by at least seven arc seconds, larger preferably than seven arc seconds, because if they were closer than seven arc seconds, you would not be able to tell that there are two stars. It's quite obvious how I'd arrived at this seven arc seconds, because that's the angle when you put your eye here and you look through that hole, that is the angle that you would see. So the sign of that angle is 1 divided by 3000. So that is 7 arc seconds and we call that the resolution. So a pinhole camera which has a diameter of 1 millimeters would then give you a resolution of about 7 arc seconds. So the stars in the sky have to be farther away than 7 arc seconds to clearly see that there are two stars. If your pinhole had a diameter of 9 millimeters, it would be much worse, of course. The resolution would be 9 times worse. So then the stars would have to be separated by about one arc minute. Okay. Let's now go to a pinhole which has a diameter of 0.1 millimeters. Well, by the same argument that I discussed here, the image then here on the screen would have a diameter of 0.1 millimeters and that would be a resolution 10 times better than that of 0.7 arc seconds. But now comes the catch. At 0.1 millimeters the diffraction is so large that on the screen here you would see a blob which is 1.2 times 39 millimeters, which is way larger than the 0.1 millimeters. So when you get to small holes and you make a pinhole camera, you cannot overlook diffraction. And so my question now is, if you designed a pinhole camera and we take a distance L of 3 meters, then the question is what is the best possible value for D, which is the diameter of the pinhole, to get your best resolution possible? Of course it will be a function of capital L. That goes without saying, but we'll take L equals 3 meters. Okay? So you learn something if you ever want to 
build a pinhole camera that to get the best resolution you have to do some physics and if your pinhole is very very small you cannot overlook diffraction okay have a nice day take care and surely we will be friends but that's always a given I did not specify how many digit precision I want your answer to be. And there is a reason for that. If we ignore the fraction, then the size of the light on the screen is always exactly the same size as the pinhole, regardless of wavelength. But that's not the case for the fraction. The width, so to speak, the width of the central maximum depends on wavelength. We chose for the single slit diffraction problem 650 nanometers, which is red. Had we chosen 400 nanometers, which is blue, then W would have been smaller would have been smaller by a factor 1.5 than in the case of 600 nanometers. So we would have to agree on the wavelength for the pinhole camera and that of course all by itself is a pretty arbitrary. Let's pick something between red and blue. Let's take 500 nanometers. But that's not the only thing. There is another issue, and that is the shape of the light curve, of the diffraction light curve, is not a rectangle. And therefore, if you had to decide on the sort of width of that diffraction pattern, it's not clear that you should choose my W for the pinhole. You may use something smaller. <laughs> I'll give you a clue that most books, when they calculate the optimum value for the diameter of the pinhole camera, they use for the diffraction pattern half of my W. But if you decide to choose W, that's fine with me too. Therefore, I will give you a lot of leeway in the uncertainty of your answer. There is not, no hard certainty anyhow. So, whenever you are sort of within 30-40% of my value, I will be happy. And then you did nothing wrong. Again, this is not a problem with a hardcore, very precise answer. All right, so let's go for 30-40% uncertainty. And we will all take half a micron for the wavelength of light. I introduced W for the single slit. Just as a reminder, so that you're not going to be confused by the word W, for a circular opening, that W, which would be the distance then between the two closest destructive interference points of the circular diffraction pattern, would be 1.2 times the W of the single slit. Okay, so keep the 1.2 <laughs> in mind.